daily we shed more light on the ignorant of you know our forefathers as a lot of the time they blamed infant mortality on abikuna and that's an argument or a conversation for another day what we have come to realize in this day and age is that a lot of the children who had died were living with sickle cell disease and as there wasn't enough information in that time we lost them unfortunately now in this day and age there are more and more conversations about living with sickle cell disease and people understand that when two carriers of the sickle cell strain get married it increases the chances of them having a sickle cell child it is not absolute what that means is just an increased probability of having a child living with a sickle cell disease now the question is if at the point of getting married you find that that you are a carrier of the sickle cell strain and your partner is also a carrier and that means that you have an increased probability of having a child living with the sickle cell disease would you still go ahead or would you automatically terminate the relationship we've seen many religious institutions insisting that couples get tested to know their genotype before they get married but unfortunately many people still do not know their genotype today we have a report on love and genotype take a look According to the Coalition of Sickle Cell Non-Governmental Organizations in Nigeria, 150,000 children are born with sickle cell disease each year, and about 40 million healthy Nigerians are carriers of the gene. Now the question is, in a population of over 200 million, how many people actually know their genotype? Yes, I do. Of course I do. No. Of course. No. Yes. Definitely no. No. The relationship between genotype and faith, um, there's actually nowhere in scripture that that is addressed. There's no scriptural stand on whether you can marry, um, whether two AS people can marry. However, um, the Bible says two can't work together except they be agreed. Basically, trying to point us to the place of compatibility. The place of faith is this. Some people believe that they can pray before the marriage and change their genotype, which is okay. Um, you know, faith permits that. If you can actually release your faith and do that, that is fine. Some other people, um, want to believe that they can go ahead and marry and not have an SS child. Um, that is quite risky because the faith is now is no longer going to affect just the two of you. It's affecting a third party that is not a willing participant. At what point should you um, tell your prospective partner or your partner about your genotype? For me, um, I think it's best as early as possible, even before you get too emotionally involved. Once you begin to notice that someone is a prospect, someone has a high chance of being the kind of man or woman you would like or you would like to spend your life with, um, I think you need to bring up that conversation very quickly. What ways can you ask such an important question? The truth is that it's not a bad question, so it should be a direct question, all right? You should let the person know that, hey, um, once there's clear interest, once it's obvious that both of you are on the same page, relationship-wise, or at least you are getting there clearly, uh, just go ahead and ask the person um, what his genotype is. I'm A. 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 No. I'm here. So the genotype is um, your genetic, com the genetic composition of every human. Um, it is the what your, your genes contain. Why the phenotype? There's something called the phenotype, it's the characteristics you then exhibit physically by having those genotypes. In human, there are basically four genotypes, the AA, the AS, the AC, and the SS. The AA is the normal genotype, the AS is the carrier. Why the AC and the SS are the ones with the traits, are the ones people you can tend to have sickle cell. Living with sickle cell disease, it's um, having a recessive genetic disorder and um, that kind of predisposes you to a whole range of infections, sickness, you're in and out of the hospital. Um, there are a lot of people, it's very common in Africa as we know, there are a lot of people living with sickle cell but it's well managed for those who know what to do and those who do regular checks. I will do some illustrations by going through the compatibility table and um, here, I've just written out how compatible um, each and different, um, how the different genotypes match. For AA, AA is like a blessing to everybody. AA plus AA, it's the excellent, it's the only excellent genotype, right? So if you are AA, you can solve a lot of questions, you can solve a lot of compatibility issues. So AA plus AA is an excellent genotype because 
um, what I did here with AA, you're going to have all your kids are going to be AA, so they don't have to bother about compatibility issues in the future. Um, they don't have to worry about who they get married to because they are AA. So AA is compatible to everybody, including the SS. Why the AA plus AS is also a very good one because, like I said, the AA is compatible with a lot of the other genotypes. Um, you have the chances of having an AA AS as, as kids, so that's very good. Why the AA plus SS is fair in the sense that you're only going to have carriers and not people with the sickle cell trait. So you're there's a chance of you having um, kids with AS, 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 because you're AA and SS. So it combines AS, 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 so they are carriers. But then that limits their choices in choosing a partner in the future. While for AA and AC, it's also good because you have the chances of um, having kids with AA, 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 and AC. Then that for AS and AS is very bad in the sense that if an AS marries an AS, your, the chances are that there is very little chance of having AA, but the other chances of having AS, AS, and SS, it's very high. So you have to be careful. Uh, also for AS and SS, it's also very bad in the sense that your chances are to have AS, SS, SS, and SS. So the chances of having an SS is even higher with AS and SS. Why for AS and AC, there's a chance of having an AA quite... Um, minimal, then you have a chance of having an AC, AS, and SS. Why for SS and SS is the worst? You can't even get married because you're only going to have SS as kids. So that's very, very bad. AC and SS is also very, very bad because you're going to have AS but the higher chances of having SS as kids. Then AC plus AC is also bad, but there's a chance of having an AA kid, but most will be AC and SS. Is there a cure for sickle cell? As we know, medicine is advancing. Um, a lot of researches are being done and um, things are actually improving. There is a cure for sickle cell. And so far, the only proven cure for sickle cell is bone marrow transplant. There is the technology um, being used now, which is called the pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, to prevent carriers from having um, sickle cell children. Getting the information out there to Nigerians to check their genotypes and educate them, it's, um, it's a, a three-tier thing. Um, first will be the government. The government needs to enact policies that would enable people to have access to cheap genotype checks, which is very important. Like I mentioned earlier in this interview, in America, once a child is born, it is compulsory test to be done. Imagine us doing that in Nigeria. That will save a lot of a lot of problems for people. Then for people, um, you don't have to wait for the government all the time. You can walk into a hospital and do genotype checks. Genotype checks are not very expensive, uh, like people people think. You can go to one of these um, hospitals, like my hospital. We offer very cheap um, genotype checks. Yes, I think, and I know it's very important. So. You don't go and marry the wrong person and end up giving birth to sickle cell children. I think it is very, very important. No matter how the love is between um, both parties, it is very important to know so as not to um, ask questions later when um, kids start coming in. Yes, I, I think it's important to know your genotype before you get married because, you know, it, when you get married to someone who is a sickle cell carrier and you're already a sickle cell carrier, you guys might end up giving birth to children who are sickle cell, you know, that have sickle cell, you know, dom dominance in them. Definitely, that should be the first thing uh, foremost because I just feel uh, I can't, I can't be, I can't be screaming on in the name of love, love, love and don't, and don't know your genotype, you get me? So as time goes on, I feel uh, uh, we should know each other, our genotype, we should visit the clinic and get to know uh, our result, our blood group and our genotype. Before you get married, you should know your genotype, you should know your partner's genotype because at the end of the day, if you get married to, if you are AS and you're getting married to um, someone that's also AS, I mean it's affect the child. I'm actually AC um, and it's a, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, it's not AS, but it's still like the C is a bit of a... Um, like a sickle cell gene, but not as, quote-unquote, as bad as S, essentially. But yes, I'm AC. 
I've had a relationship end because of genital incompatibility. I am AC and he is a he was AS or he is AS because he's still alive. Um, and you know we decided you know we found out um, after a while we did numerous tests I think I don't know how many times I retook <laughs> the genotype test to see was it a mistake is it right is it wrong um, you know and then we started talking about options and you know what can we do and this relationship had gone on for a while um, and we started discussing what can we do what are the options available um, and there are some medical things that you can do. A lot of them I didn't personally agree with um, myself or my faith. I didn't agree with some of the options that were available. So after a while, a long while, we dragged and dragged and dragged. We decided, you know what, this, this isn't going to work. How tough was it? It was, it was very tough. It was hellish, actually. Very tough is putting it kind of mildly. Um, it was, yeah, I asked myself a lot of questions. I asked God a lot of questions. I was like, Haba, try now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but it was tough. It was tough. Am I open to marrying someone that's a sickle cell carrier? No. No. Um, because the, the, the options haven't changed. Um, you know, we spoke to a couple of doctors, uh, a lot, actually not a couple, plenty, <laughs> you know. Um, and then the things that we're saying, it just, it just didn't work for me. An example of how you can ask the question. Um, on, you know, there, there, are very, there are various ways. So let's say you're at lunch or you're at dinner, or you're, you know, you're just talking on the phone or whatever. Um, depending on the vibe with the person, if it's someone, I mean, the person is your friend, right? Hopefully. Um, so it's like, look, um, before this goes any further, um, and I don't know where this is going to go, we may just be friends, but just before it goes any further, um, I'm AS, and you're not starting with what is your genitive, if it's not an exam, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, it's just like, you know, I'm AS, um, and because of that, I'm very careful about the relationships that I get into. Um, so I just want to know, do you know what your genotype is? Have you tested your genotype? Um, what are you? He says, oh, I'm A, oh, yay, score, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, you know, I'm AS, okay. Um, you know, and, and you, just, you just go from there, you have the conversation from there. But it's something as soon as, as early as possible, I think it's so. Unless you're not interested in the person, in which case, well, you know, fine. Just eat your food and go home, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> It is apparent that we need to have more conversations surrounding genotype awareness. More people need to know the different genotypes that exist and what having each one means. The least you can do before passing on these traits to your child or your children is to go get checked. So my challenge to you is, do you know your genotype? To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.